Uh, Hydatis cysts can grow inside a human to size of a football, forming football, forming daughter cysts, and remain completely asymptomatic for decades. Imagine a patient living their normal life, completely unaware that a biological time bomb is sticking inside of them. So what is it? It's a zoonotic infection caused by larval stage of a tapeworm Echinococcus granulosus or Echinococcus multicolaris. Humans are accidental intermediate hosts. Definitive hosts are dogs, foxes, and other carnivores which became infected by eating infected organs of herbivores like sheep, for example. Humans get infected by ingesting parasite X, often through contaminated soil and washed vegetables, water, or contact with the fur of infected animals. So the pathogenesis is, is uh, simple yet insidious. Eggs are ingested, oncospheres hatch in GI tract, penetrate the intestinal wall and migrate via the bloodstream, most commonly of course to the liver or lungs, but they can also reach the brain, bones, spleen, virtually anywhere. Then they form cysts, they grow slowly, become encapsulated, and can contain millions of viable photoscolysis. Uh, protos, protoscolysis sorry. The clinical picture actually is a mystery. Because cysts grow slowly, symptoms can be absent for a very long time. When they do appear, they are usually related to the cyst size and pressure on surrounding organs. Abdominal pain, a feeling of fullness, jaundice, if the liver is affected. Cough, shortness of breath, chest pain in pulmonary localization. But the greatest danger lies in the complications. Cyst rupture, it's a catastrophe. The cyst contains rich and parasitic antigens are released into the peritoneal or pleural cavity. This can cause acute anaphylactic shock, which is a potentially fatal condition. Furthermore, a rupture leads to dissemination of the parasite and the formation of multiple secondary cysts, a sort of internal reins of internal reign of parasites. Cyst infection, bacterial contamination of the cyst can lead to an abscess. And diagnosis, key methods are of course imaging, ultrasound, computer tomography, MRI. These allow for the detection of cysts, determination of their size, location, and internal structure. Stabilized.